Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we obviously have a bit of a unicorn on the channel. This is the Ryzen 3 3100. Now I pre-ordered this thing on Amazon back in June before it ever launched or anything. And yeah, it finally showed up. So today we're gonna be overclocking it using the stock cooler to see what kind of clock speeds we can actually milk out of this thing without replacing the cooler. Now, before we actually get into the video proper here, I do wanna mention that I do have the Amazon links for this listed down below in case you're interested in availability. Obviously, mine just shipped out, so hopefully that means Amazon is starting to get them in stock a little bit. Maybe they're gonna sell out again pretty quickly, but hopefully they get them back in stock fairly quickly, so hit that link down below for current availability and pricing on both the 3100 and the 3300X. Now, with that that out of the way. The Ryzen 3 3100 really is a little bit of a strange CPU because this is a CPU that you actually don't want to be replacing the cooler on and that's mostly because if you are spending the money to replace the cooler on the 3100 then you may as well go ahead and up your game to the 3300X because there are very tangible benefits to getting a 3300X over a 3100 in gaming or other general purpose tasks. Though to be clear about that last point, if all you're doing is browsing the web and going on the YouTubes, then the 3100 is gonna be just fine, even at stock clocks for that. Now I'm gonna do this one a little bit different than I've done these videos in the past, and I'm just gonna kind of skip over that whole process of me trying a new clock and it crashing out on me and get right to the juicy bits, and that is that at 1.3 volts, I was able to achieve a completely stable clock speed of 4.3 gigahertz, and and that's using Cinebench R20 just on a loop to verify that. And I can confirm the 3100 4.3 GHz 1.3 volts on the Wraith Stealth cooler. And the temperatures were actually under control. They were definitely getting up there, but the temperatures were okay, considering this represents an absolute worst case scenario that even in gaming, your CPU is rarely gonna have to endure this type of load over any kind of period of time. So when we do take a look at the actual temperatures here, looking at the stock temperature, obviously we do have plenty of room for an overclock, even in a case. Now it is important to know that I was doing all of this overclocking on an open test bench. So if you're gonna push your CPU to that 4.3 gigahertz, 1.3 volts range, and I say a range because every CPU is gonna act a little bit different. It's gonna have different temperatures. They are not comparable one CPU to the next, but it should be in the same ballpark unless I really got either a dud or or a golden sample. They should all be in the same ballpark at least. If you are gonna put this type of overclock on a 3100, you do wanna make sure that you have decent airflow because if it's just in a box that's not actually getting much airflow, you are going to cook that CPU if it just keeps recycling that same hot air that it's already used to cool off the CPU, you're gonna lose some of that cooling efficiency. So provided that you have a case with decent airflow, you should be able to achieve a very similar clock speed and voltage uh, as this CPU did on my test bench. It is also worth noting that I was able to push this thing at that 1.3 volts up to 4.35 gigahertz, though Cinebench crashed out about after five or six minutes though it didn't completely crash the computer like I usually see with Ryzen CPUs crashing while you're overclocking, it just gave an error message and Cinebench stopped. So it is entirely possible there is more in the tank for this 3100. In fact, it's very likely if I pop on a better cooler and I can get those temperatures down, I think I can actually push the clock speed a little bit higher yet. So if you're interested in that content, let me know in those comments down below. Now looking at the Cinebench scores, we do see that passes one through five both at stock as well as with our manual overclock, we see scores that are very consistent across the board. Now, that's important when you look at these stock clocks because it tells me that we're not being thermally limited in any way by the Wraith Stealth Cooler. That is, this motherboard is not limiting the CPU really whatsoever. 
But of course it is natural to wonder if it is even worth going through this process because uh, you are going to spend a little bit of time keying in an overclock and then checking to make sure it's perfectly stable. So I did want to look at a real world scenario for that. I use Borderlands 3 and the reason I use Borderlands 3 isn't because it's a game that's necessarily overly CPU bottlenecked. It's because it's a game that traditionally doesn't do a great job with these lower core and thread count CPUs when it comes to frame time consistency that is when I get down into these quad core ranges and lower it seems like Borderlands has a really big problem with stuttering somewhat frequently so I ran the CPU in Borderlands 3 both at stock clocks and the overclock and the results come out that yes there is in fact a noticeable and very tangible benefit to overclocking a Ryzen 3 3100 and this would absolutely apply to a Ryzen 3 3300X as well this is absolutely free performance it's just laying on the table here if you're just using the stock cooler now I'm not saying you're gonna get all the way to 4.3 gigahertz like I did however you should be able to get pretty close on pretty much every sample except the most absolute duds of the 3100 you should be able to push up past 4.0 gigahertz across all four cores and that's actually notable here in 2020 because so many of these CPUs are running as close to the red line as they can possibly get especially on the Intel side but even on the AMD side uh, with these high higher core and thread count CPUs, what's happening a lot of the time is you're not seeing the tangible benefits from the all core overclock because it runs single core under precision boost overdrive. You're going to see single core speeds actually go higher than you can often get an all core overclock. That's not the case here with the 3100 and 3300X. You are actually better off just keying in that all core overclock and getting higher clock speeds than it would ever boost up to by leaving everything just at stock. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I do feel like there is a little bit more on the table for the 3100. The problem of course comes in if you're investing money in a cooler, you could actually get better performance by just upgrading to a Ryzen 3 3300X. So even though it's not practical, I may still in a future video take a look at just how hard I can push the 3100. But I think for the vast majority of everyone out there, what you're gonna wanna do with the 3100 is just put on the Wraith Stealth cooler unless you have a cooler already laying around, in which case absolutely use that because you'll likely get better performance with your overclock. But otherwise just use your Wraith Stealth cooler and push it as far as you can with keeping temperatures in mind and looking at those temperatures to make sure they're staying under control. Now in the mid to upper 80s, that's not something that I would wanna run all the time, but keep in mind Cinebench R20 is the worst case scenario and that was over a period of you know, 10 to 20 minutes where I was getting those temperatures where we're fully saturating that heat sink Whereas in gaming, a lot of the time you're not actually using the CPU to its fullest and you're certainly not using it 100% utilization 100% of the time. So you're probably not going to see temperatures as high as you do in a Cinebench stress test as you uh, in real life. You're just never going to actually see those temperatures or at least very seldom. So that is my overclock of the Ryzen 3 3100. Obviously, I was just focused on the core ratio today and the actual clock speed of the CPU. But if if you'd like me to tune other things to see how much more performance I can sort of squeeze out of this CPU, let me know in those comments down below. Things like tuning the memory timings, Infinity Fabric, all that type of thing that you can actually additionally get a little bit more performance out of these things. Then let me know your thoughts down below on that. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.